Let's get investors' reaction to Trump's assessment. We bring in Dominic Tavella, the president of Diversified Private Wealth Advisors, and Doug Flynn, certified financial planner and co-founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, Lauren. You know, let's show you some numbers because we have futures down this morning. And if you look at the president's first State of the Union address in 2016, uh, the market was up. And to his address to a joint con uh, Congress in 2017, it was up one and a half percent. So why are we down this morning? Doug? Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Doug, that one's for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. How would you know that if I didn't say your name? <laughs> so it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, I don't really pay too much attention to the short term of uh, what happens after a, a kind of like a rah-rah speech for him on uh, preempting his, uh, you know, get me reelected next year uh, speech. But, I, you know, I, I think that he does have some good numbers. He's not lying about good numbers. The numbers are great. I mean, the, we've had 100 straight months of, of job growth. We've averaged over 202,000 jobs per month for those 100 months. And it's really ramped up since he's taken, taken office. So I think those are some good things he's going to build on that. Um, I, don't, I think the market, after the run we've had in January, might be taking a little bit of a breather. But that's to be expected. I don't think it has directly related to his speech uh, Five million night. people off of food stamps, record low unemployment for certain minority groups, cutting the red tape for businesses. Yet, Bernie Sanders had this to say. Yes. The economy may be great for those folks, but it is absolutely not booming for the nearly 80 percent of American workers who live paycheck to paycheck, desperately hoping that their child doesn't get sick, praying that their car doesn't break down or that they don't lose their job. Dominic, what do you make of that? Well, look, it, it, we, we've gone now through 24 months of unbelievable growth, growth that the, the brain surgeon economist said wouldn't even be possible any longer. Um, at this point in the game, the Democrats do not want to give Trump any credit whatsoever. Um, does he deserve credit? We can argue back and forth all day long, but the reality is the economy has been fantastic the last 24 months. The Democrats have to argue that he doesn't get any of that credit. And this is clearly an opportunity for them to say, hey, things are great, but maybe not all that great. They might get greater or worse, depending on your perspective. And it has a lot to do with trade. Listen to the president here. I want to do we have the sound? It's, it's sound on the Reciprocal Trade Act. And essentially, this is what uh, the president wants, and, and this question is for you, Doug, uh, wants to make it easier for him to impose tariffs. And of course, he's getting pushback from that, from even many Republicans saying, look, tariffs only increase the cost for consumers. So I was curious your thoughts on the Reciprocal Trade Act. Doug. So so my thoughts are that, in actuality, consumers have more after-tax income than they've, they've had in a long time, and it's increased quite substantially. And the amount of debt they have is the lowest point in 35 years. So the personal economy of people is actually quite good. There's a little bit of room there for him to play with China and get a better deal, which is still what he's working on. They're under some pressure. Their, their economy's slowing, and they're feeling the impact of the tariffs. They have a lot more to lose than we do. So he has a little bit, bit of wiggle room, and I think he's spending some political capital on that to try to get us a longer-term, better deal. And that, in the end, is going to be much better for everybody. And so sometimes, you know, people are just unwilling to take a little bit of pain to have a much better long long-term solution. Yeah. But as a business owner, you kind of get that. I think that's what he's trying to get across while he still can. Yeah, but Dominic, Goldman Sachs said uh, yesterday that the gains that they saw for all of 2019 kind of happened already in the month of January. What do you make of that, being flat now for the rest of the year? Yeah, I don't want to see it's disagreeable with them, but the, the gains that we've gotten so far in January, I think is the realization that the economy is not going to go into a recession, that we're not going to have this global synchronized recession. So some of that uh, negativeness is coming out of the market and we're recovering. I think going forward, it's going to be about earnings. It's going to be about growth. We haven't gotten off to a stellar start, but I think the rest of the year, if we get this trade agreement with China, we could see some positive economic data coming through. And the Fed is already where we need them to be, right? They, they, we've taken that <laughs> risk off the table, so that helps yeah. a lot. Dominic Tavella, Doug Flynn, thank you, gentlemen, thank you, for, uh, for coming on. Absolutely. <laughs>